Magical Armored Anime Schoolgirls. Chances are, if that phrase piques your interest, Sky Strikers are for you. This archetype is centered around Rei, your average anime school magical girl, but of a high-tech armor class. It's not Rei's blade that enemies should worry about, but rather her arsenal of tech and armors she can employ to dismantle the opponent's strategy. Rei's tools include jetpacks, Doc Ock mind break claws, and a really, really hot blade to name a few. Sky Strikers is a powerful deck that does really well going second because they have a lot of options to break down an opponent's defenses until the only thing left standing is her. Hi, my name's Renu. Welcome to a Platinum Master Duel Guide on Sky Strikers. I've taken Sky Strikers to the highest rank in Master Duel during the launch season that took place in January. For this guide, there will be captions covering definitions below. I'm going to try and make sure this video is digestible for new players, but please give me feedback in the comments if you have any questions or think I didn't explain something well. Like this video if this was helpful in you learning this powerful deck, and subscribe for more Master Duel content. Here's what we're going to cover. First, we'll go over the Sky Striker core and go into detail on what each card does. Sky Strikers is a toolbox archetype, so this part is very important and will take up the bulk of the video. Next, we'll cover the deck I used to climb to plat 1. After that, we will cover some basic plays and combos to give you a feel of the deck. And finally, we will cover a free-to-play version of the deck with a list of improvements in order of priority. Let's get started. Here is the core of the deck. Not too many cards in the main deck, and this is the minimum I'd recommend as your starting point if you're trying to build Sky Strikers on your own. Let's look at the cards starting with Ray. Ray is the premier starter card for Sky Strikers. She has two effects that make her especially hard for opponents to deal with. Her first effect is a quick effect that lets her essentially tag out on either player's turn by tributing and replacing herself with a Sky Striker Ace Link Monster. These Link Monsters are essentially Ray in different armor forms. They each accomplish something different that we'll get to later. Her second effect is what makes her really annoying for opponents to deal with. If your opponent removes your Sky Striker Link Monsters, so long as Rey is in your graveyard, she will special summon herself back onto the board. This means that while you have a Sky Striker Link Monster, the opponent either has to ensure they can get rid of the Link Monster and Rey in the same turn, or they will try to remove Rey from your graveyard before handling the Link Monster. This is a term we'll use again, but this makes Rey what is known as a sticky monster since she can bring herself back and tag in and out in order to ensure you have plays on your next turn. Rose is Ray's rival, another starter card, but she is a lot more niche and not nearly as good as Ray. Her first effect lets you special summon her from hand if another Sky Striker Ace monster is normal or special summoned. This effect is useful when you want to get some extra damage in. Her second effect comes into play while she is in the graveyard. If you remove an opponent's monster in an extra monster zone, she can special summon herself from the grave and negate the effects of one other monster your opponent controls. As we can see, this is a little hard to accomplish, especially if your opponent doesn't utilize the extra monster zone. And while her first effect may seem good, Sky Striker cards do not like it when you have monsters in your main monster zones. However, like Rey, she is a Sky Striker Ace monster and all Sky Striker Ace monsters are able to link summon and transform into the various armored forms with just themselves as material, allowing you to start the Sky Striker engine. Speaking of engines and main monster zones, let's take a look at the key piece of the Sky Striker archetype. This is Sky Striker Mobilize Engage, the most essential and strongest card in this archetype. Its text will reveal two running themes within most Sky Striker spells. The first clause is a condition to activate, which says, if you control no monsters in your main monster zone, then you can do whatever. So, if you have a monster in your main monster zones, you cannot activate Engage, or most of the other Sky Striker spell cards for that matter. The second clause is, if you have three or more spells in your graveyard, do this bonus effect. You always want bonus effects. What the card does without three or more spells in your graveyard, we'll refer to as the plane effect. Engage lets you search for and add any other Sky Striker card from your deck to your hand. This is strong because all of your Sky Striker cards have powerful effects, but this card gets especially ridiculous with its bonus effect, and that is to draw one card if you have three or more spells in your graveyard. 
For newer players, it might be hard to understand why this is so good, but it all comes down to how Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game where there is a lot more emphasis on card advantage. I'll play this, my pot of green, a magic card that allows me to draw two more cards from my deck. Pot of Greed is a banned card because it replaces itself and gives you an extra card on top of it. Since it can be used in any deck, that is why it is banned because if it wasn't, every deck would just play it. So while Engage by comparison doesn't let you draw two cards, it lets you pick one of your choice and draw the other card. It is stronger than Pot of Greed in most cases, but it only works when you play Sky Striker cards. This powerful effect means you can look inside your deck as if you would a toolbox, find the right tool, and possibly draw into your other powerful cards that aren't Sky Striker cards, like Ash Blossom or Max C. So what are the tools that we have available to us? We won't cover all of the Sky Striker cards, but we will cover the ones that are played. Let's look at the ones that most people use. Sky Striker Maneuver Afterburners is your main form of monster removal. It is very straightforward. The plane effect is to target any monster on the field and destroy it. The bonus effect is to also destroy a spell or trap on the field, allowing you to take out two cards for the price of one. Jamming Waves allows you to destroy set spells or traps on the field. Its bonus effect allows you to destroy a monster on the field as well. It is important to note that Jamming Waves will not destroy face-up spells or traps like a field spell or already activated continuous spells and traps. Also, in order to get the bonus effect, there must be a valid target for the plane effect. So if there are no set spells or traps on the board, you will not be able to use the bonus effect of destroying a monster. Hornet Drones is powerful even if you do not get the bonus effect. It is a quick play spell with a plane effect to let you special summon a Sky Striker Ace token. The bonus effect will give it 1500 attack and defense. It usually starts with zero. The bonus effect is largely irrelevant since the token must be special summoned in defense position and you're usually going to use the token as material to link summon your Sky Striker Link monsters. Hornet Drones alongside Ray and Rose is another useful starter card and as well it is a combo piece that can help add damage. Widow Anchor is a versatile quick play spell with a useful plane effect and a super strong bonus effect. The plane effect negates the effects of a monster on the field. The bonus effect lets you take control of that monster until the end phase. This is really powerful and has no restriction. You are able to link summon, XC summon, attack, or just about anything else you can imagine with that stolen card. It is a form of monster removal since you can use the stolen monster as link material to link summon, but it also allows you to interrupt opponent's plays that rely on monsters and their effects. This is one of our most powerful tools, but keep in mind that after this resolves, if you did steal a monster, that new monster will occupy a main monster zone, making you unable to activate your other Sky Striker tools until you get rid of it. Eagle Booster is a quick play spell that acts as a shield for your monsters by making them unaffected by card effects, and as a bonus effect, preventing destruction from battle for the entire turn. If your opponent activates an effect to remove one of your monsters, you should chain Eagle Booster to protect your monster and continue on with your play. Eagle Booster allows you to guarantee your plays as well as stall the game out by making your monsters virtually unable to be removed for that turn. Shark Cannon is a quick play spell that is especially useful in this meta. The plane effect allows you to target and banish a monster from your opponent's graveyard. Unique to Shark Cannon, at least among the cards we play, the bonus effect actually replaces the effect of banishing and lets you special summon that monster instead, with the restriction that it cannot attack. This is useful for combo link summoning plays, but it's important to note that this monster you summon will occupy a main monster zone, which will prevent you from activating other Sky Striker tools after this card resolves. Until you get rid of it, of course. The next cards do not have bonus effects, and they can be freely activated like any other spell card, regardless if you have monsters in your main monster zone or not. Let's talk about Sky Striker Airspace Area Zero. This is a field spell. This card isn't very essential to your combos or plays, but it has utility. And paired alongside the right cards, it can be a starter card. The first effect targets another card you control as cost, allowing you to check the top three cards of your deck for a Sky Striker card, then add one to hand. If you did find a Sky Striker card in that top check, you will send the card you targeted initially to the graveyard. 
This essentially lets you trade a card you control for a Sky Striker card. A cool trick you can do with this is target Ray and chain her effect onto it, turning this trade into a straight plus one. The second effect says that if this field spell while on the board is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can special summon a Sky Striker monster from your deck. Typically, this is going to be Ray. This makes it a starter card so long as you can pair it with cards like Mystical Space Typhoon or the next card we're going to talk about. Sky Striker Mecha Module's Multi Roll is a very useful continuous spell that does nothing on play. Once per turn, though, you can activate its effect by targeting one other card you control and sending it to the graveyard. Using the effect will prevent the opponent from activating cards or effects in response to your spell card activations for the rest of the turn. Most of your plays use spell cards, so this is great for shielding your plays from interruption, but it is also useful with Area Zero. Since you can send Area Zero to the grave with this effect, you can get Ray out on the field from the deck. Also, you can use this effect to remove a monster from your main monster zone, which you may have to do if you Shark Cannon or Widow Anchor an opponent's monster and bring them to your side of the field. The best part of the spell, however, is its second effect. When you get to the end phase, Multi-Roll activates and lets you reset Sky Striker spells from your graveyard up to as many Sky Striker spells you activated while Multi-Roll was active on the field. So typically, you're going to want to activate Multi-Roll first, then your other Sky Striker spell cards, and at the end of your turn, you will get to reset them on the field for an Encore. Since it's at your end phase, this means they're able to be activated as soon as the turn passes back to your opponent, so long as they're quick play spells. This is a ridiculously strong effect, and the only reason this card is somewhat fair is that using those Encore spells will banish them on use, so you won't be able to Encore or otherwise retrieve them again realistically. We're done with the main deck core. Now let's talk about the Sky Striker Link monsters. All these monsters, save for Zeke, can be Link summoned with just one Sky Striker Ace monster. This includes Ray, Rose, the token from Hornet Drones, and any of the other Sky Striker Link monsters, allowing Sky Striker plays to be very versatile. One thing to note for all these monsters is that they can only be summoned once per turn. Let's start with Hayate, the Railgun Wind Armor. Hayate can attack your opponent directly, even if your opponent has monsters on their field. At the end of its attack, Hayate can dump or send one Sky Striker card from your deck to the graveyard. This is useful for a couple things. If you started your play with Rose or Hornet Drones, this leaves your board weak, since if your opponent is able to destroy the Sky Striker Link monster you end the turn with, that's it. You have to find another starter. But if you dump Ray with Hayate's effect, this will allow you to utilize Ray's effects to stick on the board from the graveyard. The other option is to dump a Sky Striker spell card to the graveyard, and this is done for a couple reasons. One is to dump something you don't want so you can fulfill the condition of having three spells in the grave so you can utilize your bonus effects. And the other is to dump a Sky Striker spell you want to encore with multi-roll. The next card we'll want to talk about is Shizuku, the shield water armor and generally the Sky Striker monster you'll want to end all your turns with. With Shizuku on the board, all your opponent's monsters will lose 100 attack and defense for each spell in your graveyard. This can allow you to get rid of some monsters by battle. But the reason you end your turns with Shizuku is because on the end phase of the turn she is special summoned, her second effect allows you to search for any Sky Striker spell from your deck and add it to your hand. It's very good, and it's the main way you're going to get Engage into your hand to search for your other Sky Striker cards, and ideally draw a card alongside it with its bonus effect. Now let's look at Kagari, the Blade Fire Armor. If Kagari is summoned, she will allow you to recycle one Sky Striker spell from your graveyard and add it to hand. This is extremely powerful, and is why she is limited to one copy per deck. Kagari will typically recycle and gauge right after you've used it, allowing you to encore it without banishing it on use like if you did with multi-roll. Engage is great on its own, but encoring Engage with Kagari and on the next turn with multi-roll is ridiculously good and will allow you to outpace your opponent and decisively win the card advantage game. Her second effect, while not as useful, will still give her 100 attack for each spell card in your graveyard, allowing her to attack over some monsters. Those are the main three that you will see the most when you play Sky Strikers. The next Link monster is Kaina, the Claw Earth Armor. 
Kaina is useful in specific situations. Most notably, she is useful to go into on your opponent's turn with Ray's Quick Effect. If you do that, once she is special summoned, she can prevent an opponent's monster from attacking for the rest of the turn. Her second effect gives you 100 life points each time you activate a Sky Striker spell card or their effects. Finally, we have Zeke, the only Sky Striker Link monster that doesn't feature Ray in the art, and also the only Sky Striker Link 2 monster, meaning it requires two monsters as material. Zeke being a Link 2 monster is already one of their strong points. Since the materials only need to include one Sky Striker Ace monster, and the other material can be anything else, you can use Widow Anchor to steal an opponent's monster, then Link summon Zeke using that stolen monster as one of the material, so that it does not return to your opponent's control at the end of your turn. Zeke's first effect activates on his summon, allowing you to banish any face-up monster until your opponent's next end phase. This can be used to remove an opponent's monster so you can attack to win the game, but it can also be used to guarantee your next turn play. If you banish Zeke, it will come back after your opponent's turn ends. This means you're guaranteed a Sky Striker monster to go into your other armors or enable your plays when it comes back to your turn. Zeke's second effect is to give itself 1000 attack by targeting and sending one other card you control to the graveyard. Similar to Area Zero and Multi-Roll, sending the card to the graveyard is not a condition to give Zeke plus 1000 attack. So you can target Ray and chain her quick effect in order to avoid sending any card to the graveyard. And that's all of them. Well, sort of. The other cards are not very good, so many players do not play them, so I'm not going to cover them. But I will give one special honorable mention to Sky Striker Mech Armory Hercules Base before moving on. It's an equipment card, and it's similar to the other tools in that you cannot activate it unless you have no monsters in your main monster zones. Equipping this card onto a monster prevents them from being able to attack directly, but it allows them to make a second attack against opponent's monsters. If you destroy a monster and have three spells in your grave, you may also draw a card, allowing you to pull ahead of the opponent. The main reason why this card is played though is its second effect. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target up to three Sky Striker cards in your graveyard and put them back into the deck. This is the main reason why this card is played in some decks. Since Kagari is limited to one copy per deck, this usually means you can only use her powerful effect to encore things once per game. But if you have Hercules base, equip it onto a monster, then send it to the graveyard by using, say, multi-roll or area zero's effect. You can send Kagari back into the extra deck from the graveyard to go for another play where you're able to recycle and gauge. This is great for long games, but the reason why Hercules Base is not often used is because getting to the point where you can use Hercules Base often means you're already winning the game. When you're searching for cards using Engage or Shizuku, Hercules Base is likely your fourth or fifth pick since it usually requires Area Zero or Multi-Roll to already be active and because it doesn't do anything on its own. I played this card for a bit while climbing the plat, but cut it after hitting plat 4 or so since I noticed playing it on its own wasn't very impactful and drawing it always felt very weak. Now that we've talked about all of the Sky Striker cards that we want to cover, we can talk about the deck that I used to get the highest rank in Master Duel for launch season. This is the Sky Strikers deck. We're not going to go over each detail on the card like last section, but we'll cover the typical use case, why we include the cards in the deck, and why we play certain numbers of copies for some of the Sky Striker ones as well. A quick overview is that this build of the deck is very heavily geared for going second. A lot of meta decks in Platinum rank want to go first, and since they do, I can go second on the majority of the games I play, which I believe is where Sky Strikers are the strongest. Sky Striker's strength is in its versatility with the variety of tools they have and their ability to draw and search those tools. These tools specialize in simplifying the game state, which is a fancy way of saying they can reduce the number of cards on the board. We see this with cards like Afterburners or Jamming Waves that take two cards out for the price of one, and plays with Widow Anchor that can steal the opponent's monsters to battle or link summon with. Let's start with the Hand Traps. All these cards can be activated from hand on the opponent's turn in response to their plays, and Sky Strikers plays a lot more of them compared to other decks because they have a lightweight core and have a lot of draw and deck thinning ability. 
Effect Veiler can negate the monster effects of opponents. It's not the best hand trap since it is fairly restrictive and that can only be used during the main phases on your opponent's turn, but it is still useful and can stop plenty of plays. One of the main reasons we play Veiler though is because it is an essential piece to our Selene Axis Code Talker package, which we'll cover later. Max C is straightforward to experienced players, but for newer players, this is a hand trap that when used, allows you to draw a card for each time your opponent special summons during that turn. If you chain Max C to cards that would special summon like Monster Reborn, you at least trade Max C for another card in your deck. But you also discourage your opponent from doing their best plays since you may be able to draw all the answers you need to destroy their board, which is what Sky Strikers excels in. Ash Blossom is arguably the best hand trap in the game right now. It stops plays by negating effects, which include adding cards to hand from deck, dumping cards from deck to graveyard, and special summoning from the deck. It definitely takes a lot of knowledge of what the opponent wants to accomplish in order to use effectively, since it only stops the opponent's play for one instance. But effective use can hard stop their plays and lets you carry out with breaking down their weaker board when the turn comes back to you. For the Sky Striker monsters, we play three copies of Ray and two copies of Rose. The Rays are explained in the previous section. The short of it is she is your ideal starter card that is very annoying for the opponent to deal with. Rose can be cut down to one, but I play two because I play Pot of Desires and because there's not many other cards I like in its slot since it is another starter card. And now for the rest of the deck, spells. You can see that there is not a single trap card in this deck. And while I did play Infinite Impermanence to climb to plot, in the end I cut it out from Mystical Space Typhoon since I was facing more Eldritch decks during my climb to plat 1. Spells are a core part and a huge portion to any Sky Striker deck because of its running theme of its tools wanting you to have 3 spells in your graveyard in order to have their bonus effects. Let's go over the spells that are not Sky Striker spells, as I go over why those cards are great in the previous section. And instead, I'll briefly go over why I play a certain amount of copies of them after. Harpy's Feather Duster and Lightning Storm are excellent cards for going second. They allow you to sweep the opponent's board and start your plays. Reinforcement of the Army and Terraforming are simple spells that help fuel your 3 spell condition and allow you to search for Ray and Area Zero respectively. I may cut Terraforming in the future since it was used in previous versions of the deck to also be able to search out Chicken Game, which I no longer play. Pot of Desires is a pot of greed with the near harmless cost of banishing the top 10 cards of your deck. I initially did not play this card since I was afraid of banishing some of my tools or Ray, but with the sheer number of hand traps you play and Call by the Grave being such an effective meta card, I decided to include it in and it's something I've since not been able to cut out. Engage lets me pull slightly ahead, but Pot of Desires can push me that extra bit to decisively take the lead. Pot of Avarice is an interesting card, and I only play one copy simply because I don't want to draw this on my first turn. It requires 5 monsters in the graveyard, which is easy to accomplish on my second turn and on, but not so much the first. This card not only gives me a little more draw power, but it lets me put Kagari back into my deck for a round 2. I've often found that if my opponent was able to come back from me destroying their board somehow, Avarice was an excellent recovery play, I loved to top deck it, and it won me many more games than it lost. Mystical Space Typhoon is a tech card, meaning I've only included this card to fight some of the stronger decks in the format when I was playing in January. The primary target was Eldlich. Eldlich has many strong Floodgate cards like Rivalry of Warlords, Imperial Order, Skill Drain, and more. Mystical Space Typhoon allows me to destroy them. Called by the Grave is a meta card. It banishes an opponent's monster from the graveyard and negates their effects till the end of the next turn. Since there are so many hand traps being run by not only the strongest decks, but nearly every deck, it is a good pick to protect your plays. It is also effective against cards that activate in the graveyard, like Eva or Eldritch the Golden Lord. If you are a newer player, keep in mind that you want to keep this in your hand while you are making plays, and only set it at the end of your turn during main phase 2. And even then, you may want to hold on to it if you suspect they will Ash Blossom your Shizuku. For the Sky Striker spells, we play one copy of Afterburners and one copy of Jamming Waves. Usually, these can be searched out and available before we play Pot of Desires. Jamming Waves is far from the strongest and can be replaced with another copy of Afterburners, but it is a form of non-targeted monster removal and I'd rather keep myself open to both options as opposed to just having one. 
Area Zero is the only card I've opted to bump to two copies when I initially played one. Since I wanted to increase the chances, I had something to search out with terraforming just in case I banished it with Pot of Desires. It might be better to instead bump multi-roll to three copies, but I've never found myself without multi-roll when I needed it yet. Eagle Booster is a great card to search for, but a not so great card to top deck, so I only play one. Finally, I play two copies of Shark Cannon, simply because I've never needed more. Moving on to the extra deck, let's talk about why we play certain numbers of Sky Striker monsters since we cover why they are so good in the previous section. Shizuku and Hayate are your go-to Sky Striker link monsters for setup and enabling your plays, so they should be maxed out. Kaina and Zeke are kept to 1 because they are situational. If I could, I would bump Zeke to 2, but the other cards are a little more important than that second copy. I would play more copies of Kagari, but she is limited to 1. Let's talk about a certain group of the deck that make up the Selene Access Code Talker package. This group includes Valor, Halki, Hita, Selene, and finally Access Code Talker. These cards are part of a combo and options for that combo. We'll cover a step-by-step -step how to do the combo later, but the gist of it is that with any monster on the board, and either Valor or Ash Blossom, you can perform a series of Link Summons going from Halki to Selene, and then Access Code Talker. This Big Daddy is your go-to game ender. It has an effect to target a Link monster used as material in the graveyard, and buff itself with 1000 attack per that monster's Link rating. We usually use Selene to summon Axis Code Talker, so this means typically he will come out on the board with 5300 attack. On top of that, this monster effect and the next one cannot be responded to, and so this often means he cannot be negated. Finally, the second effect is he is able to banish any Link monster from your side of the field or graveyard to destroy one card your opponent controls, with virtually no limit on how many times you can activate and use this effect. So, he is your all-in-one spot clearer, a large attacker, and a game ender that is very difficult to stop. Where Hita fits in the picture is as an alternate line of play into Selene that is dependent on your opponent having used Ash Blossom and for them to be in the graveyard. In this meta, that's pretty common. With Kagari as the needed fire monster, or a normal summoned Ash Blossom, you link summon Hita and special summon an Ash Blossom from their grave. From there, you link summon into Selene, revive Hita, then you can link summon access code Talker. Finally, the last two that we haven't mentioned yet include Nightmare Phoenix and Ningursu. Nightmare Phoenix is a link to monster that is very easy to go into, and is useful to destroy floodgates that aren't skill drain. Going into Phoenix is a little risky, however, since you are often left without a Sky Striker monster. Ningursu is a Link 3 monster. He is typically summoned using a Link monster you stole from your opponent using Widow Anchor. He functions well as two things. The first, being a source of non-targeted and non-destructive removal, which is useful against certain boss monsters that have immunity to those things. The second is that it's a convenient Link 3 monster you can make with Widow Anchor if your opponent uses Link monsters. I honestly think cutting this is a good consideration though, as there are easier Link 3s to make like Nightmare Unicorn, who is also pretty useful. And often the problem isn't trying to remove monsters that can't be targeted or destroyed in this meta. That's the entire deck. Now let's get into a few plays to get an overall feel of the deck. We'll go over a basic set of play and the follow up, then the Axis Code Talker combo. I'm keeping this short because this video is already long and because Sky Strikers is also just more of a toolbox deck and not a combo deck. I'm thinking I would like to make commentary play videos and have that serve as a play guide instead, since I think that would be more effective. Let me know if this is something you're interested in in the comments below. So this clip jumps in on the second turn, and here we'll showcase a basic setup and follow through play, ignoring the fact that we could likely kill the opponent on our second turn. The opponent has set up two spells and traps, what we're going to do is normal summon Ray and attack with her. Once the attack goes through, we can use her quick effect to summon Hayate for another attack. The opponent, however, uses Raigeki Break to target and destroy Ray. Now we can here showcase that Ray has an ability to dodge certain effects like Raigeki Break. Since Ray is being targeted, we can chain her quick effect to tag out into her armored forms. And since the initial target Ray is no longer on the board, Raigeki Break fizzles out and doesn't do anything. With Ray in our graveyard, we have basically ensured that if anything were to happen to Hayate or whatever Link monster we end up with, we can have Ray special summon herself as backup. 
Hayate attacks the opponent, and her effect activates to dump a Sky Striker card. Since Ray is in our graveyard, we decide to build up our three spell in grave condition and dump a spell we don't want to draw into, in this case, Area Zero. Since we do not want to use Engage before having the bonus effect active, we will instead just special summon Shizuku and search for our second Engage at the end of our turn. And we'll set Shark Cannon since it is a quick play spell. It's important to note that we cannot add cards with Shizuku's effect that are already in our graveyard, in this case, Area Zero. This is going to be your typical setup play, and the next turn is the follow through. The opponent sets four cards and ends his turn. We draw Jamming Wave, which lets us pop one of his back row cards and as well put another spell in our grave. With two spells now in our grave, we are able to go into Hayate and dump our third spell and start using our engages to gain massive card advantage. Here, we dump Multi-Roll since we're going to search the other one from our deck with Engage. In our main phase 2, with now 3 spells in our graveyard, we start using Engage and try to get as many uses as possible to get as many draws as possible. What we're going to search for first with Engage is Multi-Roll, so that we can activate Multi-Roll for the next Sky Striker spell activations, and Encore as many spells as we can when we end our turn. We draw Shark Cannon from that use of Engage. The next card we search with Engage is Afterburners, to destroy their monster and with its bonus effect, destroy a back row card. The card we draw with that use is Terraforming, which we use to further thin our deck out by searching and playing Area Zero. After reducing the amount of cards the opponent has as much as possible, we go into Kagari to recycle and engage so we can add more cards to hand. This time, we add Widow Anchor, which is one of our most powerful and versatile spells. From here, we end our turn with Shizuku to add another Sky Striker card at the end of the turn. We set our Widow Anchor to protect Shizuku and recycle Engage and Afterburners onto the field with Multi-Roll so we can engage again on the next turn, allowing us to draw and add even more cards. And so with this, we can see that we are pulling away super far ahead of our opponent. We have 13 cards, both on hand and in field, which they will only have two when it comes to their turn. With the sheer number of cards and options we have, we will likely be able to stop anything he does. And even if we were to top deck a card that destroyed everything on our field, we have Area Zero on the board to summon a Ray from deck, and Rose in our hand to recover, and as well we have Ray in our graveyard to replace the Link Summon monster that we may lose. So here, we jump into the second turn again to showcase the Access Code Talker combo. We start our turn by destroying the opponent's back row. With Effect Failure and another monster we can special summon in the form of Hornet Drones in our hand, we are able to go into Axis Code Talker for 5300 damage. First, we activate Hornet Drones. This must come first before the normal summon of Valor since it cannot activate once Valor is in the main monster zone. With these two, we are able to Link Summon Hauki, who requires two monsters with one of them being a tuner as material. This tuner is Valor. We activate Hauki's on summon effect to special summon from our deck another tuner and pick Valor since Ash Blossom is the better card to draw. With Valor and Hauki on the board, we are able to link summon a Link 3 monster, Selene, whose requirements only include needing a spellcaster monster as material. Again, this is Valor. With three spells we have used and one spell we destroyed that belonged to our opponent, we are able to place four spell counters on Selene as soon as she is summoned and use three of them to special summon Valor from Grave. This leaves us with Selene and Valor, allowing us to link summon Axis Code Talker. Axis Code Talker's on summon effect activates. We target Selene as she was used to link summon him granting Talker an extra 3,000 attack since Selene is a Link 3 monster. And while I don't show it here, it's important to remember that if there were more defenses on the opponent's side in the form of monsters or spells or traps, we can use Talker's effect to banish all the Link monsters we filled our grave with one at a time to remove those defenses one at a time and continue our attack.
So now we are here in the free to play version of the deck. Let's first cover how you can get all these cards and why it's so cheap. In here, you will find that there are only three URs you need to craft. That is, two copies of Engage and one copy of Kagari, which you may not need to craft if you open her from the Stalwart Force booster packs, which are the best booster packs to buy in the game. Ash Blossom, Lightning Storm, and Solemn Judgment are cards you can currently buy from the special bundle deals, which every new player should buy. Raigeki, Monster Reborn, and Reinforcement of the Army are cards you can unlock from playing the dual strategy gate in solo mode, which every new player should complete, since the rewards for it are great not only in those cards, but the gems it offers. The SRs you have to craft may be a lot, but after following my new player guide, you should have a lot of gems and be able to open at least 80 Stalwart Force booster packs, which are the best booster packs in the game and give you a chance to open Kagari and Pot of Desires, and should leave you with more than enough room to craft Pot of Avarice, Hornet Drones, Widow Anchors, your three Shizukus, Nightmare Phoenix, and Zeke's. Kachikochi Dragon is a generic rank 4 XC summon that can attack over plenty of monsters and go for a second attack with its effect. This is also a free card in the tutorial mode. Deco Talker and Raster Liger are free cards that come from the starter structure deck, Link Generation, which you can either opt to pick during account creation or unlock later by completing either a duelist level or dual gate mission. Every other card is a rare, which no player should have any problem crafting if they open enough booster packs with their free gems and dismantle the extra copies. Some interesting picks I have included include Fisher, which is just a spell card monster removal. More copies of some of our better uh, Sky Striker cards like Afterburners. I've included Mech Armory so you can at least see how it is being used, though you can easily replace it with just about any other spell. Then there is Forbidden Chalice, which is an excellent form of monster effect negation that many Platinum decks run. Overall, at most, you will need 90 UR crafting points and 390 SR crafting points. This is ridiculously cheap and doable for any free-to-play player, and this is the worst case scenario, assuming you didn't open Kagari and you didn't open any Pot of Desires. Cards you would want to craft in order of priority first start with maxing out Ash Blossom, the best hand trap in the game. Then you want to max out Maxi. I would craft the second Lightning Storm next, and followed by a Harpy's Feather Duster. From there, I'd save up for the Selene Axis Code Talker package in my Platinum deck, which is a total 150 UR crafting points and 30 SR crafting points. That being said, Halki is another card you can open from Stalwart Force and you only need one of them. Everything else that I have in my Platinum deck is not very important and will come down to your preference. For instance, you don't have to craft Terraforming or Ningursu. When you get to Platinum rank though, I would advise crafting Called to the Grave and consider crafting Crossout Designator as well. That's it for me and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment if you have any feedback or questions. This turned out a little longer than I expected, but I am happy with it in the end since I believe I cover it in enough detail that newer players will be able to follow. Give me suggestions on what decks you'd like to see me cover next. What I do have planned is definitely an overview of Madolche. This is my very first Yu-Gi-Oh deck that I built, and so it's near and dear to my experience with the game. Remember to let me know if you'd like to see a commentary play guide as well for Sky Strikers. My name is Rednu again. Check out my live Twitch streams. I commentate my gameplay at high ranks. Thank you so much for sticking around and have a great day. I got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we have that one, finally. Holy man. It took us way too long to get here, though. <laughs> We're being honest. Woo! Let's go!